This is going to be a tutorial of using CoSpaces EDU. CoSpaces EDU describes itself as a kid-friendly creation app widely used in schools around the world where students and teachers can easily create their own virtual content. Working as a website, but also as an application on a mobile phone or tablet, CoSpaces EDU enables students to build code and explore their own creations in virtual reality, augmented reality as well, while also learning essential digital skills. In this tutorial, we will go over setting up a classroom, a website overview, creating assignments, building worlds, coding, the student view of the website, student tracking, the AR and VR applications on a smartphone or tablet, pros and cons, and pricing. Let's get started. Creating an online space for your classroom on CoSpaces EDU is very easy. All you have to do is sign up as a teacher and inside the website, your space will be created for you. The CoSpaces website will open on your classes page. Here you can create a new class by clicking the create class icon. Name your class for easy organization. You will be given a class code for students to enter on their own CoSpaces account, or you can add students who are already a part of your online space. Okay, let's explore the website. So again, this is your classes page, and looking in the right corner, you'll always find your specific class code. Then clicking on the four squared tab on the left side of the page will take you to the gallery page. Here you're going to find a multitude of pre-made worlds to explore, like this one, which is a map of Lord of the Flies. Clicking play will take you into the world where students can visualize the setting of the novel. As you can see, players can zoom in and out or look at an aerial view of the space and they can also explore scenes on the island where the boys in this novel are trapped. The other main tab to the left of your page takes you to CoSpaces. And in this area, you can create virtual worlds where all of your students can build, explore, and interact. Let's talk about creating assignments. So there's a few ways to make assignments for your classes, and the first and most simple is to use a pre-created space from the gallery. To do this, click the three dots appearing when you hover over the space you want. Next, click Remix, which will make a copy of the space for you. This space will then show up in your CoSpaces tab. You can select this world, and in the drop-down menu, click Use as an Assignment. An assignment box will appear where you can choose the class you are assigning this world to, as well as enter the student's instructions. Selecting Allow Students to Use Templates will give students the ability to build within the world you are sending them. You can assign work to individual students like you see me doing here, or you can separate students into groups. I only have one student in my workspace, so that's what you see here, but close spaces would make a copy for as many students as you have in your class. If you wanted to make a group assignment where students can interact with the world as well as their classmates, select group assignment when creating the assignment. Next, you can create your groups as well as select and drag students to their group assignments. Students will then be able to work within these worlds together. Creating an assignment from scratch is the most advanced and time-consuming assignment to create, but it allows you to create spaces and worlds specific to your classroom and content. I have the 3D environment selected, which we will focus on for the bulk of this tutorial. So again, name your assignment and add directions for your students to follow while inside the world. Then choose your preference of group or individual assignment. In your classroom, you will click on the assignment and you will be prompted to choose a scene. There are pre-constructed worlds to choose from here, but we want a blank slate, so I'm selecting empty scene. Inside the world, you'll see that it is indeed completely empty. To adjust your view of the world, click and use your touchpad to scroll up or down. To zoom in, simply scroll up or down without clicking. Now, when you begin creating a 3D world, this video camera will be in the center of the world. To delete items, double click the item and a menu will appear with the option to delete. Now let's start adding to this world. In the bottom left corner of your screen, there will be a hidden tab where you'll find all your building materials. Click there for it to expand. First, we are going to create the background for our environment. So select environment and choose the best background for the scene you will be creating. 
If you have a hyper specific environment you'd like to create, select floor image and you can upload any downloaded photo to this environment. But we don't want to do this today, so I'm going to go back and select a grassy area to begin building on. This is our base. So you can change the weather like you see me here, making it rain or snow. You can even change the ambiance by adding fog, selecting nighttime, or inserting a color overlay. Background music can be added as well. When it comes to adding more specific elements, CoSpaces has a wide variety to choose from. Select library from the same menu and you can begin adding 3D elements to your space. You see me here adding a tree to the landscape. Of course, your perspective may be off, but that's okay, just zoom out and in your new addition will come into a better view. To adjust the size of an element in your world, click the element and select the drag to scale button. Press and hold while moving on your touchpad up or down to adjust the size of the element. To move elements around the screen, click and drag the element where you want it to go. I'll give you a quick overview here as well about what 3D images are available. You'll see there is quite a variety ranging from specifics like household furniture to more abstract building materials. Creating characters adds a deeper story element to your 3D world. CoSpaces has generic characters as well as avatars with specific jobs or from certain time periods. Start by selecting a character and they will appear in the world. To change the orientation of your character, single click that character and select rotation mode from the menu. This allows you to change the positioning of the character from 360 degrees. To change the appearance of specific characters, double click the character and select the materials icon that looks like a paint palette. Here you can change the color of the avatar's outfit and features. You can also change the opacity of characters if you want them to look ghostly. To change the name of your character, double click and select the title that CoSpace has given the character. Then you'll be able to enter a new name in that box. You can also change the emotions or actions of a character. Um, so to do this, double click the character and select the animation icon with the waving hand. Here you can change the character's posture, so sitting or standing or pointing. Um, you can change their reaction, so their emotions within the scene. And finally, you can assign characters an action, so you can make them walk or talk. For the purposes of this scene, I want Romeo to look defensive, so I'll go into Reactions and select Defensive from that drop-down menu. Here you'll see I've added another character to this scene, and since it's a fight scene, I want to add a sword. So I'll go back to the library and select the search icon, and look there, they do have a sword, so I will insert that into my scene. With this sword, I'm going to show you the attach feature in CoSpaces. Um, I want that sword in my character's hand, so I will double click the sword and from the menu select attach. Then you'll see blue dots appear in my world where I can place that sword and I did in fact choose a hand. You'll see me choose an action for our second character and finally this scene is beginning to come to life. Okay, I've adjusted the characters within my scene a little bit, as you can see, and I wanna make them talk to each other. So to do that, double click the character you'd like to speak and select the speech icon button, where then you can add speaking or a thought bubble by just typing in the box. Very quickly, I wanna show you this feature as well. So I've added a sword for Romeo, but he's not a fighter, so I want it on the ground. To do that, single click your 
item to make it lay flat with the rotation feature. But then if you want to move an item up or down, you're going to press and hold the drag to lift icon. Scroll up and down until you get the element where you want it. So one of the coolest features of this website and application is how easy it is to code. This feature can be used by students and teachers to add actions to a 3D world. In this website, they call it Coblox. Important though, you have to turn on the ability to code items within a world. So to do that, double click the character and select the code icon. Here you can enable coding and make their names appear on the screen. This is why it's important to name your characters, so they are easier to recognize in the coding feature, Coblox. To begin coding, select the code icon in the top right hand corner of the screen. This will open the code blocks extension where you can begin writing the code for your scene. As you can see, there are several pre-made prompts for the code to make it that much easier. I want my character to walk on a path. So to add a path for avatar movement, return to your building library and click the building icon. <clears throat> Here you're gonna find a variety of walking paths to insert into your world. When you have the path where you want it in the world, again, make sure the code block has been enabled for both the character you are moving and the path. Attach your character to the path and you are ready to code. Now we can begin to write code. In code blocks, I will select the transform tab since I'm intending to make the character move. Here I will select the code that allows my character to move on the round path. I want the action to repeat, so I will go to the control tab and insert a code for forever and then move the transformation code to within those brackets so that that action will of course go on forever. To add an emotion, posture, or action, select the actions tab and the code for the reaction you want your character to show. Double check your code and then press play to watch the code in action. This is a little bit of a jump, but I want you to see a more in-depth code of a scene and what that looks like. So I've added paths for two other characters along with transformations for each character in the scene. Take a moment to read the code before watching it in action. I'll show you one more cool code function in the context of a different scene I've created. So reading the code on the screen, you'll see that I have embedded a quiz into the world. Toggling over my code, you can see the question I'm asking, and I'm showing you here that this code is found under the Actions tab. You'll see that there are two brackets within this code where I have coded one of two different info panels to appear based on a student's answer. And I will press play so you can see what that code looks like within the 3D world. As teachers, I think it's important to see how these applications we use look from the student perspective. So that is what I'm showing you here. You'll see the student is only a part of the 2A class, so that is what appears on her screen. She can click on her class to view her assignments. And when she does, you'll see that as a student clicks on an assignment, the instructions appear before they enter the world. Students must press play to see the world in action. Teachers can track student work by clicking the student tab in their CoSpaces classroom. Again, I only have one student in here, but all students would appear under this tab. I'm selecting a student and then the book report that this student worked on and opening the drop down bar. Selecting version history will show you a student's progress within a world. So you can see here how this book report cube looked when it was assigned and then how the student adapted it based on the assignment. The CoSpaces website is a great space for building and coding spaces. 
But immersion into the virtual or augmented reality is best experienced through the smartphone or tablet application, which is available for download on iOS and Google App Stores. Here, you will see a student opening the app on their smartphone and navigating to their classroom and assignments. The touchscreen features of this smartphone allow for easier navigation within the worlds. Clicking the view icon in the bottom right of a screen will allow students to view the world in augmented or virtual reality. The augmented reality feature places the scene in a given space where the student chooses to drop it. They can then walk around and move their screen to explore the world. The virtual reality mode allows students to similarly walk around or press the zoom controls to navigate the 3D world. DIY cardboard VR goggles can also be made to enhance the experience even further. So to close this tutorial, I want to talk about the pros and cons of CoSpace's EDU as a classroom application, what would work well, and what might need some adjustment. So for the pros, the number one pro I found was usability. I think that the menu options and the toggles are incredibly user-friendly, and especially for coding. Coding can seem daunting, especially to teachers and students, as that might not be something we are quite familiar with. But the pre-made code really does make it accessible to students and teachers. Um, also, creativity. I think there is a lot of um, user freedom within this inner space where you can kind of create exactly what might be best for your classroom. I like the autonomy for students. They can build their own worlds or explore the worlds how they want to. There really is an open plan here where you as a teacher get to decide how much or how little freedom you want your students to have in the space. Um, and I think it's a great place to collaborate within the virtual reality or augmented reality. With those groups, um, you could put three, four, five students or your whole class in the same world where they could kind of interact together um, and um, explore that space as a class. Um, for the cons, they all fell in a similar category. I really think that there's some um, kind of adaptation of this interface to be done as far as assessment goes. Um, you can track students' work, but um, definitely not in a step-by-step -step kind of way. Um, there's also very little room for discussion or response. So there's no way to kind of thread a discussion there based on a um, experience or to respond within that software. Um, this wouldn't be a problem if you were just kind of embedding this into your own um, classroom interface like Google Classroom or Moodle Canvas, whatever you use. You could kind of make it a link and then have a discussion thread. But I definitely think that is something that could be adapted within the website in the future. Finally, finally, I wanted to kind of highlight the pricing options that are available on CoSpace's EDU because um, it is free to kind of test it out, try it out, but you are going to want that pro if you want to implement this into a classroom. So you'll see that pro is $50 a year and um, they have district options as well that you can call and question about. Um, but looking at this list down here at the bottom, you'll see that it really is best to have that pro if you want to use this in a classroom.